This is the latest addition to Wago's automation line, the Wago Perspecto CPTV, or control panel with target visualizations. Now, this may look like a standard HMI, but is that and so much more. It is an HMI with integrated PLC functionality, which allows you to utilize the Wago IO Pro CAA programming tool which is IEC 61131-3 compliant. The control panel is a device that can interface to the WAGO I.O. system, other PLC systems, um, and other I.O. systems as well. So with that being said, um, in this first video, just wanted to give you a quick introduction to what this line has to offer and some of the things that you can do from an initial startup and setup of the actual panel itself. So. To get started here, I just wanted to show you a few of the things on the panel itself. Um, you can see here, this is our power connection to power up the device, obviously 24 volts DC. We have a few serial interfaces here, standard 232, 485, as well as a CAN uh, open port and another CAN port using uh, RJ45 connections. Uh, we also have two USB ports as well as a standard Ethernet port. Um, you also have a battery backup system and incorporated in many of the panels is a um, card interface uh, for example like a compact flash SD card or a micro SD card interface for things like data logging things of that nature on the actual panel itself. So that's just a quick look at you know some of the interfaces on the front of the panel. Um, now I want to just discuss quickly you know some of the other things that you can do with this panel with regards to changing some parameters and settings as well as um, you know how to get started from an actual programming aspect. Okay, so the next thing again we want to do is just look at a few things on the panel that we can actually configure and set. Um, you can see obviously this is a touch screen uh, panel here. You can either use a stylus of some kind or you can just use your finger of course. Um, when we come into here we can see there's several things we can access. Um, some sync uh, activities with regards to syncing uh, the system. Uh, soft reset, Wago Control Center. Um, we'll get into that in a moment. Obviously, any uh, registry edits that you need to make. Save your registry so when you make a change to the configuration, um, obviously, you'll be prompted to do that, notepad, and so forth. Um, you could also come into here into settings for the control panel, network dial up connections, another way to access that with regards to setup um, on your IP address, subnet mask, and so forth. Uh, if I come into the control panel, for instance, right now, you can see there's several things I can set up with regards to the date and time, display settings, um, you know, when it's going to power down, things of that nature uh, to save power. Stylus setup as well. You can go in there and, of course, configure your stylus with a quick setup there. Storage manager, keyboard mouse setup, things of that nature. And, of course, there's the Wago control panel as well. Um, I can close this, and here's the control center that I was just mentioning. A couple of ways to get into here. You can see here um, a couple of things, you know, with regards to which version of WinCE are we running, things of that nature. Um, you know, obviously this is a Windows CE platform. Auto start applications, different things are going to run uh, as far as on the startup. Uh, users that you can configure and the rights for those users, FTP setup, um, whether or not you're going to enable the FTP server, HTTP uh, for your um, browser, and using that to again access other devices for example. Um, obviously we can use this device to access other controllers and we'll look into that as well. Your backup and restore functionality, in your advanced settings here, you can see different things, date and time, system setup, volume and sounds, um, your CAN termination on the Ethernet connection, as well as the 485 and 2, 422 excuse me, set up there. Um, in the LAN, this is just, again, another way we can come in and set up the device. Um, for example, we could come in here and modify 
the actual setup of the IP address. So we could type in a different IP address, for example, in the device. Um, if we made this change, for example, in here, just to, let's say, a simple change like so, um, when we come out, of course, the first thing it wants to do is save any changes to the uh, registry and save the registry to flash because we made a modification to something like an IP address or whatever. Um, so I could also come into here, as you can see, looking at some details and some information with regards to the setup here, physical address, your MAC ID and so forth, subnet mask, in here. So, also, um, if I come back to the control panel real quick, I'm just going to reset that IP address for us for later. But, again, you can see where you can bring up the keyboard, come into an area, easily change that setting. Um, you can hide the keyboard panel. Okay. Okay. And then it wants to, again, save that to flash. So, again, these are different things we can do uh, with a panel on initial setup, um, different things we can configure and things of that nature. Um, for example, now if I wanted to, um, I could come into the browser, and if I wanted to access another device, let's say from Wago, I could come into this area here. and just simply type in an IP address and now when you're looking at this screen I'm, I'm, browse, I'm using just the, the browser to access a 750-880 device. So I'm on the home screen for that device, getting the information about uh, its setup on this home screen. Okay, so now if I wanted to come in here and make a change, I could simply put in my username. And then my password. And then access the various links where I could come in and make modifications to the Wago controller. So again, just using a standard browser here on the WinCE platform, accessing one of the Wago 75880 devices. And I can obviously come in and make changes from here, from the actual interface or control panel. So again, just another one of those things, nice conveniences that you can implement here. Um, so then I can just close this. And then from here, um, if I wanted to, there's certain things I could do. For example, if I come back into the control center, you can see this don't start when CE shell. I can select that, save it, and then I could um, do various things, or actually I should say I could start on startup, I could just go right into the execution of the code that I've written for the device. So I wouldn't have to go through the platform to do that CE shell to do that. I could just go right into the execution of the code um, that I've created so then it acts as a, just a HMI interface, again, with PLC functionality. So... Again, these are just some of the things that you can do with it. Just getting familiarized with getting around the panel at first here. I'm going to actually show some additional things here in just a moment. So again, uh, one of the other things that I can do in here is I can come into the control center here and I can select this don't start win Windows CE shell. Um, from here then, when I do a reset of this device, um, when the device starts up, it's going to go into the actual executable code or allow me to access the device and load the code onto the panel itself. Um, so I can come in here, select that, um, click OK. It's already done the save to the registry, to the flash. And then I can do a soft reset. And now you can see I um, is going to start the device up, and now I can access the device um, 
and run a program on here and load that program. So I can just close this out. You see here there's no program loaded on the device, how I'm connecting to the device, through what port. Um, and then from here, I'm just going to go into the code assist tool, log into the device, um, click on yes, and then it's going to begin loading the program. You can see I've made a connection. Here's the program I'm going to load on the device. Um, I can start it from here, or I could have actually started it from code assist as well. Um, you can see there's different screens here that I have access to. Um, I have a little mixer program that runs in here. Um, you can see now this is data coming from the WAGO controller and the information coming from that device being displayed on the screen here. In this case, um, using what, what is known as network variables, again, there'll be other videos to show you how to do these sorts of things, but initially just showing you, you know, what device am I connected to, um, and this is the information coming from that device. Start, stop, levels, um, the actual tank level, for example, mixing time, and things like that. I can go back to my main screen. Um, I can do some things like come in here and go and adjust the screen brightness on the panel itself so I can set it up for that type of application as well. I can come in here and read information. Um, you can see here with this function code I can come in and read various addresses. Um, for example, come in here and look at the values. Um, in this case for the outputs. And you can see here now, reading the registers, bit level, register level. Um, I could also come in, of course, and, and write to these as well, um, if the controller is set up to do so uh, from here. So this is strictly, obviously, my Modbus communications data coming back and forth from the controller to the HMI, displaying the Modbus information. You can see here some additional information with regards to my communication link, whether or not there's an error, columns are okay, whether or not a legal function code, uh, legal registry, whatever. So again, just different things you can see from um, the screen that's been created. Again, program running on the device for Modbus communications information coming from the controllers and of course things we can do from the panel itself. So again, just wanted to introduce you to the Perspecto CPTV device um, and some of its capabilities and in the future we will be making videos to show you how to do various things like uh, um, as well as uh, what we call our network variables, a data pool we create, Modbus communication, uh, various things you can do from a code standpoint on the device as well. So hopefully this was an informative video to introduce you to our new HMI line, as well as give you some of the ideas uh, with regards to the things you can do with this system. Thank you.